In this tutorial, we will be using the E3 platform to analyze volatility data. Start by making sure you have a case loaded. Next, we will select to add evidence. In the add evidence option, we will go to the memory dump option and select import volatility data. Once you select that data, click next and select the file or folder. Navigate to the data source. Volatility is a free tool that is available to do memory captures. You can download the tool from their website and have E3 read the data. In my example, I have the data already loaded. I can expand the nodes and start taking a look at the data that was imported into the E3 platform from volatility data. Some of this data can be quite large, depending on how big the memory dumps are. For example, we can go and look at data such as callbacks. We can expand that open, process it, and click on our callback nodes. Callbacks are used to look at a variety of purposes, such as processing messages, notifying drivers, and performing tasks. On Windows, this can include kernel callback files and functions in the net framework, APIs, and more. You can see data such as the POP control key and details on things like USB hubs. So, this information can be quite useful in a lot of investigations. Next, we'll take a look at the Windows Big Pools. The Windows Big Pools are a part of Windows memory management systems that allocates memory to data structures. Windows uses two types of pools. One is a non-paged, and the other one, is a paged. We see the caches assigned the different pool types, whether they're known, not unknown. You can continue with additional analysis focused on the Windows DLLs. The DLL lists are a command that displays DLLs loaded as a process, or shows only processes that have been loaded by specific DLLs. Next, we'll be taking a look at the RRIP files. The RRIP, IRP, or what's known as in out processes. These request packets. It's a structure that stores information used to process any I.O. request. IRPs are used to communicate between the IRIO manager and drivers. If we keep looking through our memory dump, we can also see the user 32 crypto base. Now, let's look at the Windows environment variables and the driver modules. We can start with a driver scan. These are drivers that can be scanned and used by the scan command option. The process detects drivers' entry points, records and results and corrects any errors that take place and contain hubs, monitors, and more. If we go to the Windows NVARs, these are environment variables, that are strings that contain information about the system and the current user. These would include things like file placement, file identification, and program functionality. You will see things like system drivers, path information, system root temp, your windires, OS information, and more. We can continue by looking at the Windows IAT information, the IAT tables is where Windows stores the address and functionality that are imported from DLLs. This would include things like applications needed to call as a function in a different module. It looks for those function addresses in the IAT. This is where you can see a lot of kernel DLL information and see if they are true or they're false. Then we can take a look at your MBR information. The MBR scan is a tool that can scan for malware on a computer's master record boot, master boot record. The MBR is a small program that contains information about the hard drives, partitions, and locations of the operating system. Take a look at things like the partition index, the boot partition type, the sector size, more. Additional details on the memory dump analysis can be found at volatilityfoundation.org.